You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Teaching during distance learning is going to be oh so challenging for teachers. There is not one model to follow. Some are teaching in class and might be going remote later, or will start remote, then will switch to in class. Some teachers are teaching on a cart and remotely. There are full remote learning models and there are hybrid models. All of this adds to confusion and stress because we're not all in the same boat together. And instead, it feels like we're drifting on a raft in the middle of the ocean and the winds just picked up and, of course, the sharks have arrived. At times, it feels like the raft is just breaking apart. I am going to be honest, I do not have one solid master plan of how to conquer teaching remotely or in a hybrid model. It is new to me. Um, Now I'm back in class and everyone is in a completely different scenario, so it is a challenge to think of what to do for providing ideas and how to create resources for teachers. So for me, this is a whole new brainstorm ball game on how I can support other art teachers or homeschool parents or studio instructors. What I'm going to do is offer a variety of suggestions that I thought about or have tried back when I was doing remote learning and hybrid um, that you can either use or tweak to make them work for you in your situation. What I do know is that we cannot overwhelm ourselves or work past our breaking point because our health needs to come first. In this situation that we're going into with both COVID-19 and cold and flu season around the corner with completely new ways of teaching, um, we need to be very aware that we can put our bodies and minds in an unhealthy situation and that we can compromise ourselves for real if we get sick this year. This year isn't a normal year. We are superheroes for being teachers, but microscopic bugs are pretty super too. I'm not sure it's worth the risk trying to go into an ultimate battle with the bugs, just so that way we can be superstars at work. When we're stressed, we can do a lot of damage to both our physical and mental health. I've had hard years at work where I'd been so stressed that I no longer knew who I was. I can't have the have that the typical stress of teaching and also add on COVID-19 teaching stress way on my body and mind. I don't think I'd make it very far. So let's take a look at some ideas how, of how we can manage teaching during distance learning. I'm going to offer some tips that you can use to lessen the burden that has been put upon you by your job in addition to the stress um, that was already there because we all know that teaching isn't always sunshine and happiness. First, don't try and do anything. So my first suggestion is to take a minimalist approach to the platforms you use. There are so many online platforms from Google Slides to YouTube, Zoom, Google Meets, Head Talks, Microsoft Teams, My Blueprint, Kahoot, Google Classroom, and more that you could use to instruct. There are so many online tools that I honestly don't even know all of what is out there. There are a ton that teachers are talking about and I have never heard of them. I've never been on like, for example, Schoology. I, I, am, I am still getting my head wrapped around Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Blueprint. And there's just so much, there's so much technology changes in sometimes instantly. So let me tell you, (laughs) just learning how to make good shareable resources on Google Slides this year for me was a big task. Okay. I create resources for Ms. Artastic on my Teachers Pay Teacher Store that are digital, you know, PDF format or whatever. 
all the time. I make YouTube videos all the time. I'm quite good at exploring the internet, but all of a sudden with everything going on and having to immediately figure out something new, like that's a lot to ask of me and to ask of anybody. Learning to make a YouTube channel was a huge task and like I love technology and the internet, but I've been reading horror stories of some teachers trying to juggle five or more different websites and trying to learn them all at once. I'm stuck still figuring out my blueprint to Microsoft Teams to use them in like really successful ways. And my goodness, five? Oh, that's a, that's a lot. Of course, they're feeling so overwhelmed and stressed and are having breakdowns in their early weeks of back to school. Or now, I mean, look where we are. I mean, you, they have to be so stressed. This could even be you. The truth is, that's a lot. That is way too much. Of course you're feeling overwhelmed. I was getting overwhelmed just getting used to creating resources that are good on Google Slides. That took me a while to perfect it for creating it and using them as a professional resource for teachers. And I'm still learning about it. And it's Google Slides. Seriously, Kathleen. Whew. You are trying to both teach your students and yourself right now. This could be true, right? This is too much. So my first tip is to tell you, don't. Yep, you heard me right. Don't. Do not try and do it all. Even if you are being pressured by other teachers or your administrators, you cannot expect yourself to do it all or learn it well. Also, think about your days. Like, honestly, I think an hour of my day is spent having kids wash their hands. The instructional time is completely different. What we could do is completely different. And the pressure for what we should be doing is the same as before the pandemic. <sighs> so basically, it is unrealistic and honestly, like, None of us can, with everything going on, none of us can keep going at this rate, trying to do everything. It's most likely not possible. You can't do everything. Instead, I suggest you pick two things that you're going to learn and do very well. So if you're doing distance or remote or hybrid, or even if you're in class but have to do things like parent-teacher interviews or other meetings online or you're incorporating now, um, online resources into your classroom because just in case you might have to switch back to remote learning because we don't know the future. Um, don't do it all. <laughs> Pick two things for technology, right? Online resources that you're going to learn and do very well. So instead of doing five minimally and not really knowing anything at all um, or how to use any one of them in a very well good way, Pick two that you're going to learn and do very well. So instead of stretching yourself thin across many platforms, pick two that you will master. Perhaps you'll use Google Classroom and Zoom, but you will use them exceptionally so that you feel like you've got this and know what you're doing. Perhaps you'll pick Microsoft Teams and Google Slides and you'll master those two platforms. And you'll feel a lot happier because you will feel like you know what you're doing. Right now, no one knows really what we're doing. If you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed out or have an overall sense of having the feeling like you have no idea what you're doing and what is going on, it's because that is exactly what is happening. Just remember, everyone feels that way right now. Acknowledge this feeling because it is real. Okay? Now, let's lessen the burden. Action item number one. Right now, jot down on paper all the platforms you are using. Yep, you might even need to pause this podcast. Write them all down. Look at that list. Now, cross off your list. Sorry, cross off your least favorite. So take a look at that list and cross off your least favorite platform. Next, think about each platform and which you like the best, which have a lot of strengths, and which you think you can really master. Now cross off all but two. 
These are the two that I want you to use for reals. Get rid of the rest. Don't experiment and play with them. Just only use two and see how that goes for the next month. I promise you will feel a lot better. If you don't, go ahead and go back to doing the other model of doing it all. All right, let's talk some lesson planning. This year, remember to keep things flexible and simple. We don't know how districts might change things as the pandemic rolls through this new school year. Have a game plan or a plan with topics or themes you would like to cover, but be very flexible with willing to change things as you go, not accomplishing as much with the kids as you normally would have, and some kids not participating, or maybe you have to switch to a hybrid or in-class model later. So, here's my tips. Use the same art lesson or unit or theme across multiple grades. So, you can use the same art lesson for a few similar, similar grades, such as K1 and 2, or 3, 4, and 5. This way, you're planning a lot less. If you teach K7, that is 2 to 3 art lessons, instead of teaching 7 individual ones. Now, if you're doing online, all that editing or figuring out technology or your technology does not do what you want, which is often what it does when you really need it, um, it's a hard, right? I am struggling to keep up with just doing podcasts and YouTube videos on top of full-time teaching and then, of course, all my resources that I make. So I can't imagine all do planning digitally for seven classes or some like you know seven grade groups that's a that's a lot okay so simplify it it's already a lot the kids are remote they just want to be happy and do the work and meet your needs their needs all of the above use the same unit so number two is you could use the same unit for a few similar grades so if you want to have a longer plan developed that goes deep into a topic, you can even use the same unit for similar grade groups. If you're teaching the element of art line, teach the same presentations, show the same videos, and give the same lessons online to the same group of kit grades. So cut down your planning. This will also cut down on different mediums, materials, prep, and setup. Your time is very limited with your kids this year, so you need to make it count. My third idea is to use the same theme. If you want, you can use the same theme for all your classes. For example, we're all going to explore the theme time. We're all going to explore the theme past. We're all going to explore the rainforest. You can use the same YouTube video po videos, PowerPoint, and other introductory resources to preload kids for all your classes, and then give them grade group art lessons around the same theme. So here, um, the introductory and the preload is the same, but then of course you're going to plan individual projects, but they're all working towards the same theme. And that's going to keep your focus in the same ballpark so you can kind of keep rolling with it in your own mind. I find to always, like I like to batch themes or ideas. It keeps me focused and helps me stay productive and get things done a little bit more efficiently because if I'm bouncing around ideas or topics or themes, I find it to be, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to change my brain, right? So you can use this for all your different, so give it to all your different grade groups, um, our art lessons are on the same theme. So this will also save time and keep you stress-free. Keep it simple. Be strategic. And one thing you can try this year is making your teacher planner digital. I am sure there are already some on TPT if you search it. I also like to use my Microsoft OneDrive calendar for some of that. Um, but you can also make a simple one in PowerPoint or Google Slides and just have a blank slide for each month and then type the month and change the color for each page. Then you can copy the file and make a planner for each grade group. That way, if you need to change things up, say if you go from in-person to hybrid or distance learning, then you can just like 
edit the typing instead of redoing everything. You can also cut and paste your text and move things around or put in images of samples of artwork or stuff off Google that you found was inspirational or even links to websites with tutorials or links to YouTube video art lessons if you're going to use it for the lesson itself. Boom, done, right? All done, easy to move around if you need to adjust. This is your second action item. Decide on one tactic for how you're going to minimize your lesson planning this year. Pick one strategy like keeping a consistent theme and using elements through all grades, and then stick to it this year. Consistency is key to help eliminate some of the decision making and planning this year. Now, before I talk about my next ideas, we're going to take a little break here, and I want to tell you about my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, and when we're back, we're going to talk about, well, not you, but I'm going to talk about, and you can get some ideas for, creating art demonstrations digitally. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a pause from this episode to let you know about my art resources for educators. You see, I create art resources for art teachers, general teachers, or homeschooling parents to use in the elementary and middle school levels. I really enjoy creating artworks that will target various areas of the curriculum, encourage students to experiment with a range of mediums, and I like to work with themes and topics that are of high student interest. I'm always keeping my eye open for what is all the rage in the student world. I want to save teachers time and therefore I design high quality art lessons that will provide teachers with all the elements they need to teach and implement a lesson successfully. From the lesson plan to rubrics, reflections, and all the steps broken down into visual slides, I've got you covered. My art resources can be found in my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, Ms. Artastic, or by subscribing to my art resource library for art teachers, the Artastic Collective. Find links to my TPT store and my membership in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Now, back to this episode. Creating art demonstrations digitally. So, Digital art demonstrations are a huge challenge for art teachers and studio instructors. Um, it is like trying to juggle things you do in person with the added lights, camera, and of course the awkward feeling of talking to yourself, but you're actually talking to a lot of people, like I'm doing right now. Then there is editing. I know this feeling, but let me tell you, it does get easier. I've been running my YouTube channel for a while, and yes, I look completely awkward in the beginning, and my filming is terrible, and I say, um, 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 like every sentence. Then, if you get into editing, it gets ridiculous. But of course, like, you'll figure out your drive and it gets better. For my YouTube channel, Ms. Artastic, which, by the way, you can find me by searching Ms. Artastic on YouTube, I do a lot of lighting, overhead filming, and editing. But all that takes time, and I'm doing that for free, so I had to learn how to streamline the process. For filming, I got an overhead arm that I mount on my camera. Um, I just got that off of Amazon for around 30 bucks. I hate spending money, <laughs> so you can fully know that everything I have is very affordable and it's not a production. <laughs> you can also try using your document camera or use a tripod or monopod and then have it like straight off, so horizontally off of a shelf or a piece of furniture that's like taller than your working area. And then just anchor it down with something like heavy, like cat litter or a sandbag. I saw this trick on YouTube once. They just have a monopod like on a shelf and the camera, of course, then faces down when you screw it on. But like, just get a sandbag. I'm like, where am I going to get a sandbag? And then I'm like, cat litter, yo. So yeah, cat litter. Just get some really cheap, cheap cat litter in a bag, not a box. Um, yeah, and you can use that to anchor down so it doesn't fall over. I have a table that I have usually just set up with 
two lamps on it with bright white LED lights on either side of my workspace. And I turn those on. Um, and then it also is in front of a window. I can also turn up the exposure on my camera manually, but if you edit, you can always turn up the brightness in the video later. And if you want to streamline further, just put a desk in front of a window or go outside, especially if it's overcast, you know, to avoid some shadows. And you can just film there with all the beautiful, beautiful lighting. Next, just film. So film either in one shot and let the mistakes stay there. Of course, I mean, that's a teachable moment, right? In class, I'm always making mistakes and the kids know that um, mistakes are okay. It's all part of growth mindset. So I say, guys, I made a mistake. <laughs> I taught this wrong. I gotta reteach you. <laughs> uh, even teachers make mistakes. Uh, I'm a human. That's what happens. I make mistakes. Uh, so I use it as a teachable moment, teachable moment. And of course, you can do that in your video as well. Just be like, oh, guys, sorry, made a mistake. Let's try this again. Okay? So you can do this just as you would in class um, doing a live demonstration. Or if you need breaks, just pause the video after every five minutes or so on and then put all the videos or the clips in the same line on your video editing software later. So for instance, I use Filmora. Take all your clips, put them in order, hit export, and then you're done. Okay, so don't have to worry about all that fancy editing. Just stick it in there, let the mistakes be, and hit export, and you're done. So for teaching, don't bother adding transitions or graphics or anything. Again, this is not the year to experiment and be creative and amazing art teachery. I made like really poor quality art uh, videos on YouTube, which I at the time thought were really great for like a year before I realized these are not that great. <laughs> and then I improved my graphics and transitions in game. So yeah, it's just, it takes time and you gotta find your vibe if you're really into that thing. Like I now I'm into it, but if you're not into it, just just do it, post it, done, right? Not the year to be experimenting and be extra creative and amazing art teachery. You are already amazing making these videos. Let me tell you, it's difficult. So you can create art demonstrations by filming yourself with your camera above you and posting it onto YouTube or uploading it to your online classroom. For YouTube, you can post as public, and that is where anybody can find the video, or you can select unlisted so that no one can find it unless they have the link. So if you're not comfortable with filming your art lessons, you can also take a picture of each step in the art making process. So if you're not game for live videos, which is a challenge and of course a skill, which we're all thrown into right now, then just take pictures of each step. So like make the art piece, but for every step, take a, take a picture. Then you can put the pictures of each step on a separate slide on either PowerPoint or Google Slides. Um, and then you can put a little blurb of the instructions. And then when you, if you have to do like live Zoom meetings, which I hear some people have to do, which is, seems like a lot, seems like a lot to me. But if you're one of those people who has to do like a live Zoom meeting, or if you are doing live Zoom meetings or Google Meets or whatever it's called, um, then you can have that like open in the background. And when you're on with your kids, you can say, okay, we're gonna do the art project. And then you can slide, you share your screen with the kids. Even I think on Microsoft Teams, you can do that too. So you share your screen and then you can just sh go through the steps on your Google Slides or PowerPoint, whatever it is. And they can see the steps and you can talk about the uh, different steps as you go on. Um, you can also do a uh, video on PowerPoint. So if you have the steps and if you just wanna share the video with your kids and not do live videos, then what you can do is like a voiceover. So if you go to like export and in there you can make a video and you can, there's a little record button and you can go and actually t do a timed recording uh, with a voiceover. So you can record your voice over the steps where you explain the steps and then you manually hit next, next slide, next slide when you want. And it's just recording it at the pace that you're directing it. And then you can post that instead of doing a live video, which can sometimes or all the time be extremely <laughs> intimidating. So you can also use YouTube to find art lessons for distance learning. 
So if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're needing a break from filming yourself, this is a great way to balance your life in this chaos. You can search art for kids and see what you find. A reminder, I've of course created a YouTube channel, just search Misertastic, and there you can find a lot of free directed drawings or art lessons. Um, and there are also lessons that in, are focusing on the elements and principles that I did at the beginning of the pandemic. So you can find tons around that. And they will allow for flexible med mediums to be used. So feel free to use my lessons in your classroom or post it online to your kids anytime you need a break. Hey, I gotcha. Next, my next tip is to not do it twice. Don't do it twice. Okay, don't do it. If you're doing hybrid or distance learning and in-class teaching this year, you're going to be asked to be in two places at once, which is overwhelming. You can upload your videos to YouTube, pub publish as unlisted if you don't want any to find anyone to find it, of course. Then you can save time by recording or filming all your art project demonstrations. For kids at home, give them the link to the video or upload it to whatever platform you use. For kids in class, play the video in person. While they're watching, you are monitoring or prepping to save you time or buy you a needed break. Okay? Yeah. I am going to say that again. So for the kids in class, you're just going to play the video in your classroom in person. And while you're while they're while they're watching you, do you, right? Cuz you are technically instructing. Um you're monitoring, prepping, helping them. You're basically a second body for your own self. Like how cool is that? It's like basically giving yourself a clone. And also you can pause yourself and rewind. I've done this and I realized that I for my YouTube videos, I draw faster than kids, right? Because I have no kids asking <laughs> questions <laughs> and stuff, right? So I pause myself, or if they miss it, I can rewind and do it perfectly again. It's amazing, actually. And for kids who are not, who miss the day, uh, they can just go and watch it. And I don't have to teach it twice. It's really nice. Like anytime I need a break, that's what I do. I just play myself. <laughs> so don't do demonstrations twice. That's crazy. So this is just the beginning of what I have to share with you on distance learning. I have more tips to come where I give you more ideas of what to teach and ways to teach art during remote or hybrid learning models in the next episode. Of course, if you want to see these show notes, you can find them on my blog. You'll find the podcast section there and you can find the tips for distance learning post. Um, and you can reread this, or you can also find links to my resources in my Teachers Pay Teacher store there. And I'll post the link to my TPT store in the description of this video. Well, my friends, I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. And of course, don't forget to tune in in uh, the next couple of weeks where I talk to you um, a little bit more about teaching distance learning. Bye for now. <laughs>